So I'm going to tr transition now to speaking about the two programs that, uh, that the Climate Action Initiative delivers with our partners. As I mentioned before, we have the regional program and the farm level program. The regional program really came about because it was clear that in British Columbia we can't be looking at adaptation for the sector at a big, broad, provincial scale. We have such a uh, highly uh, localized uh, climates, very diverse climates across the province and also a very diverse industry. We have such different types of production from the, from the northeast, for example, in the Peace where we have predominantly grains and canola down through into the south in the, in the Fraser Valley where we have a very diverse industry, lots of dairy, poultry. Vancouver Island, we just we need to have a program that is able to work with the industry um, for the types of adaptations that are required for those industries and the types of microclimates and changes that the industry will be experiencing. So this program really reflects um, that we learned that when we did the risk and opportunity assessment. Um, it's also intended to work really at the broad scale, so to look at cross-cutting um, concerns and issues for the industry that are beyond the ability of an individual farmer to, to address, where there really needs to be a lot of collaboration and in particular um, potentially working with government partners to uh, to address challenges so that's the kind of scale and focus of the regional program and then the farm adaptation innovator program and really these two programs are both they're, they're more or less running in parallel to try and address climate change from these different um, angles. So they're looking at the same problem, but they're, but they're coming from these different scales. So the other, the other program is really an applied research focused program where we are working with research, the research community and with farmer cooperators to um, identify farm scale challenges with adapting to climate change. So farm level issues where, where applied research is needed to demonstrate and evaluate farm practices and technologies to support the industry with adapting and with dealing with weather related risks. So that is the scale that that program is operating at. So unsurprisingly, one of the most common concerns that is common across the province relates to water and it relates to to water on multiple levels. So th there are concerns both about too much water uh, and too little water, and then also uh, water just coming at the wrong time um, for agriculture specifically for production needs. And unfortunately with climate change, we have that whole spectrum of water related issues uh, occurring. Um, so this slide focuses on the too little side of that spectrum. So this relates to, and I am going to reference back to the previous presentation in the series, which really focused on the, on the projections. I will not be speaking in detail to the projections today. I'm focused more on what this means for the, for the industry. But just as a nod back to that earlier information, with the too little water, the, the reasons that that is occurring are the increasing average temperatures, the drop in summer precipitation and will continue to occur in much of the province. It's not all across the board. And then the increasing frequency of warm and hot days. So more extremes around uh, heat and periods of heat uh, in particular during the summer, and then how all of this, those shifts affect what is happening with hydrology and, and stream flow and when peak flows are occurring, which is generally going to be earlier, so less water is available later in the production season. So how that translates into impacts for the industry is an increase in irrigation demand, but that is happening at the same time as this drop in water supply availability. So this is a very challenging scenario going forward. And then what occurs, of course, along with that is increasing complexity and cost for producers associated with water management. On the flip side of this, climate change is also creating the challenge around too much precipitation. A lot of this comes down to seasonal changes in precipitation. Summers generally, this is not again all across the board, but will be drier and there will be longer drier periods. But on, on the flip side, we are expecting to see more precipitation overall annually and that precipitation will be concentrated in winter, spring and fall. Particularly challenging for producers is that spring and fall precipitation and if it comes as extreme rainfall that is an additional challenge and that is expected to happen that we will have more extreme rainfall events so that excess precipitation will really be potentially quite concentrated and that creates a number of management challenges for producers there's more more runoff more pressure on drainage systems and the potential for more site-specific flooding 
The third kind of general impact that is expected to be experienced across the province and that has been a big priority in a lot of the plans that we've completed are the shifts that are occurring around pests and pollinators. So with the with the combination of the types of changes that are expected, increasing annual temperature, really the variability, the, the, the changes that are happening across the board with precipitation, all of this is exacerbating the situation with pests. We're looking at the likelihood for increased winter survival because average winter temperatures in general are increasing and also the possibility for with longer seasons the possibility for more pest cycles during a year. There's also a lot of concern about shifting range and distribution of pests. So pests coming into areas where they didn't previously exist and the industry needing to to manage that and the possibility for new invasive species moving into into new ranges as well. And I should mention that that set of changes also creates a lot of cost and management difficulty for producers. So that's really the knock-on effect of that, is that there needs to be a lot of attention paid to, to sort of pest management and, and monitoring, which is an additional um, expense. So extremes and variability is the fourth impact area that is commonly prioritized across the province. Uh, so again, one of the accompanying effects of the changes in climate is the expectation that there will be more extreme conditions of various kinds, more extreme heat, more extreme precipitation. I've already mentioned both of those changes. And really, those also create the possibility for more wildfire, which we certainly have had a lot of experience with in recent years in British Columbia, an increase in drought periods. And then in addition to the extremes, we have this unpredictable and shifting production window challenge. So the variability that I mentioned really translates into, again, quite a bit of management complexity for producers for when their key windows are going to be occurring, things like planting, harvesting, how they manage nutrients, and, and quite variable and, and unpredictable thaw and freeze cycles as well. And all of those things affect the agriculture sector. And there we predominantly see a lot of partnerships between the research community and producers to, to address those challenges. As I mentioned at the start, I won't focus strongly on this program um, today, uh, but there is a lot of information about this program available on our website. The URL will be at the end of the, the presentation, and there is all of the projects that have been done to date have their, their final reports and so forth available on our website. But the overall focus, as I mentioned, is to demonstrate and evaluate practices um, for their suitability to assist the industry to adapt. Alongside of that, to develop knowledge and information resources and just the capacity of, of the industry to adapt, and then to be able to turn around, hopefully, um, as a result of this work and to promote uh, more broadly with the industry uh, when things prove to be supportive of adaptation to promote those practices, approaches, and technologies. And just a quick uh, set of examples of the work that was completed in the 2014 to 2018 period when the first phase of this program was underway. Um, I won't speak specifically to these projects, but just wanted to be able to offer some examples of the types of work that were undertaken during the first phase of the program. A really broad range of subject matter, um, everything from water issues to grazing management to crop protection. Um, trials and again all across the province and with different types of production so wine grapes um, horticultural crops forage cattle um, so really covering the diversity of the industry through that program so now i'm going to turn my focus more to the regional program which will be really the focus of the remainder of the of the presentation this program has two major components um, the first is that we work on a very in-depth adaptation plan with people within the region. Um, we bring together producers, uh, anybody expertise in the region that are, that are available working with agriculture, local governments. We bring all of those groups together for a planning process that often lasts for six to seven months, um, starting in the fall, ending in the spring, uh, to develop a strategy to assist the producers uh, in that region to deal with the challenges at that regional scale that I mentioned before. And then we have a second uh, element of the program, which was when we move into actually delivering or accomplishing elements of those plans. So we undertake a series of projects, co-funded and collaborative projects, to implement the plans. And this slide just demonstrates the scope of the program to date. Uh, the completed in the green are the, are the regions that we worked in in the 2013 to 2018 period. Um, the more orange kind of color is the regions that we will be working in in this new phase um, 
of the program the the next sort of five years and the the two that are highlighted in, in blue there the Kootenai and Boundary Bulkley Nishako and Fraser Fort George those plans are expected to be completed uh, this spring so spring of 2019 and the Vancouver Island plan should be completed in spring of 2020. So this slide just demonstrates the extent to which this process is very strongly about engaging with um, local and regional expertise and, and, and really regionalizing the focus of the work in this program. Um, we start out by forming a, an oversight and advisory committee uh, that brings together all those groups that I was mentioning so that they have a, have a group that can kind of oversee the work throughout the planning process. And these groups remain in place as we move into project implementation to continue to guide and, and support the work um, and, and bring their local perspective and their, and their local knowledge um, and then we do a, quite a bit of background research to make sure that these plans are not reinventing any wheels and that we understand what work that's already been done in the region. And then we move from there into a, a series of much broader consultations where we try to bring as many producers as we can in the region together um, through multiple workshops. The, the first set of workshops are really focused on bringing the climate change projections to producers and, um, and local government to talk about what those projections look like for that region and how they will impact agriculture in that area and then to prioritize which impacts are of the greatest concern um, or interest to the to the industry regionally and then we move into action planning in, in this second set of workshops that are indicated there we really focus on developing strategies and actions to adapt to the priorities um, impact priorities that have been identified and then we move from there really into what are the near-term priorities for implementation and we complete the plan and move into project delivery. So the objectives for the for the program that for the part of the program where we are developing and delivering the projects um, are really to deepen the knowledge of the specific risks and opportunities and adaptations for that region. So we may have done that high level identification of the impacts, but to, to really drill down and understand um, what th those kinds of shifts might mean for the industry uh, locally. We also, out of the program, aim to develop tools and resources that will support ad adaptive decision making but at both the regional and farm levels. So I've explained that we have the, the farm level program, but through this program, if we have the opportunity to develop a tool that will be broadly um, beneficial at the at the farm level that is certainly one of the the focuses of the regional program and then we are very focused again on strengthening those collaborative relationships and partnerships that will not only support adaptation um, during the time that this work is happening in the region but over the long term as well uh, so I'm going to shift now to just speaking a little bit about the agricultural impacts, which really form the base of the, the plans that we, that we develop and then the projects that we deliver. And these, of course, are, as I've explained, defined through the regional planning process. So they are specific to the region, but we also know that there are some impacts that are quite common across the province. And I'm just going to quickly outline those broader or more common or shared impacts just to set the, the stage for some of the projects that I will be describing 